So this would be day 25 reviewed, um, Wednesday. We left Libby, Montana, um, I don't know, about nine. You know, we actually got up and got on the bikes at a decent time. Pretty chilly. Uh, headed north out of town on Highway 37, crossed the river and took a left on, um, uh, I want to say 567. It runs up to a little place called Yak. Y-A-A-K. Really, really, just really cool ride. I mean, beautiful road, smooth road through the woods. Cold, uh, down in the low 40s. Deer everywhere. I mean, everywhere. It's like being in East Texas. Um, you get to Yak and the road turns sort of kind of east eventually. And it's just up, down, back and forth, narrow, trees right up on the road, cliffs right on the road. Um, a lot of deer again. <laughs> I mean, we were just seeing them everywhere. And uh, Sarah got out front. We just let her run. She turned off her communicator and she was just cruising, having a good old time by herself riding really well i mean there were some quite a few times i would come up behind her and film her and you know she's hitting all her lines hitting the corners really well daniel same thing you know real smooth um he follows too close you know whenever he gets behind me or gets behind her he gets real close and i'm constantly having to tell him you know make space you know mind the gap because if something happens you don't want to be slamming into the back of someone and he just gets into go mode and forgets about that and I have to constantly remind him. But yeah, riding really well. And it was a neat ride, it was all paved. I mean, it, it was really good pavement. There was a few places where there were some um, frost heave type things in the road, you know, where it had some pretty quick surface changes and one of those caught Daniel out in a corner and his bike jumped all over the place and kind of scared the poo out of me because I was pretty close to him. Um, you know, I had time to react, got it on video, but it just kind of overwhelmed the suspension. You know, it made the back of the bike bounce when you hit it. Um, anyway, you get to the far side of the road and you come out near the, uh, Can Cusa, you know, or Ku Can USA. Ku Can, you know, it's a play on Canada and USA, but anyway huge reservoir that runs north south for like 50 60 miles something like that we crossed the bridge on the northern end of it and just went on over into eureka uh found the little hotel we're at right now grabbed some lunch at the little subway here dumped all of our luggage went back across the bridge and ran down the west side which is a scenic byway and i think we saw one bmw gs on the road going the opposite direction other than that, we didn't see a single car. I mean, the road was empty and it was such a good drive. I'm just, yeah, 60 miles of no side roads, no stop signs, no traffic. You f we're way up high on the side of the mountain up over this reservoir. So just, you come around these corners and there's just epic views of the reservoir, um, you know, spreading out down the valley eventually when you get to the south side there's a big dam there with a cool overlook so we stopped there went to the bathroom and then we're like yeah let's just turn around and run that back to town you know we were thinking we'd cross over and get on the east side and run highway 37 all the way back to town but highway 37 the surface of the road is not that great uh you know lots of frosty eve hadn't been paved in a while big cracks seams bumps it's just not a fun road to ride i mean if it were paved it'd be an awesome road to ride super twisty very scenic but uh yeah so we just decided we'd just run right back the same side so sarah took off first and we never saw her again uh you know daniel and i would stop for pictures every now and then we were shooting some video and we were running a pretty good clip but it was quite a while and we eventually got back to the bridge and i told sarah to wait for us on the on the bridge and so she did and uh, we ran into town, went to a place, uh, Front Porch Cafe, really, really good food and really good soft serve ice cream. <laughs> I 
I love ice cream, it's a weakness. But uh, after that, we ran up to uh, the Canadian border, which is just north of town. And I had not planned on going across. I was just gonna stop, let the kids go across. But then before I know it, I'm funneled in and there's nowhere to turn around. I'm like, oh crap, I got my pistol on me. Get to the, you know, checkpoint, you go through one at a time. And sure enough, one of the very first questions they ask is, are you carrying any weapons? And of course I'm, yes, sir. Um, you know, put your hands up. It's like, yes, sir. And uh, another agent comes out, Canadian agent comes out, and like, you know, where is it? I'm like, it's right there in that right pocket. And, you know, and they're very professional, very friendly, you know, explaining what's happening and, you know, asking me all kinds of other questions. And, you know, I answer truthfully because I know they got the x ray machines everywhere. They're going to see what you got. So, uh, yeah, she came out and unzipped the pocket, pulled it out. The guy's like, you know, we're going to walk it over to the U.S. side, hand it to them. You know, we're authorizing you to do a turnaround, which is all we want to do. So the kids could say they'd been to Canada. And um, I had to wait while they walked it back to the other side. And then once they walked it to the other side, they're like, okay, now you can ride across. And then, of course, I got to go through the U.S. entry with all their x-rays and cameras and and they're very professional, you know, matter of fact. And I told the kids before, it's like, don't joke with these guys. Don't laugh. Just answer their questions and tell the truth. Uh, they don't have a sense of humor. So got to the back to the American side, and he's like, you know, are you the one that had the weapon? I'm like, yes, sir. And he's like, all right, well, you pull up to that spot up there, and we'll bring it out and give it back to you. And the guy comes out, and he approaches me from behind, and he immediately wants to know if I'm running any cameras. He doesn't want to be on camera, you know. It's like... They want you on camera every which way from Sunday, but they don't want to be on camera, but you know, they work for us, whatever. Anyway, you know, he came up and opened the back bag on my bike and showed me the gun. I was like, is this your gun? I was like, yes, sir. You know, is this your magazine? Yes, sir. And they had zip tied the gun open, you know, and uh, unloaded it. He's like, all right, I'm taking the gun and putting it in one glove. I'm taking your mag and the spare bullet and putting that in the other glove so you don't lose it close it up it's like as soon as you pull out of the parking lot you're free to pull over do whatever you want with it reload it you know whatever it's like okay and then eventually the kids you know all come through and daniel's the only one that had his passport but it was interesting because i'm talking to the u.s guy and i was like hey i don't have my passport it came the day after we left down is when it showed up even though we tried to get it i don't know three and a half months ago uh, but daniel actually had his passport and uh He's like, oh yeah, I see that you have a passport. So, you know, it's in the system. Same thing for Sarah, it's in the system. I don't even know why they make you carry it. Um, but anyway, we got back on the American side, no big deal. You know, I was kind of nervous about the whole gun thing. Cause he's like, you know, if you hadn't told the truth, you would have been arrested and that would have been a big deal. And I was like, yeah, kind of figured. You know, the one thing though is he did ask, you know, do you have loaded magazines and all that kind of stuff and i'm just thinking the gun and on me and i forgot i had two loaded mags in my tank bag apparently their scanners didn't see that because it was surrounded by flashlights and a big knife and a bunch of other stuff so i'm sitting there after i pull around and i'm waiting for them to tell me to go back across the border it's like oh crap i totally forgot to tell them about the mags in the tank bag it's like you know if they see them now what am i going to say they never saw him thank goodness so we got back across no problems and just ran back down here to the hotel and it's a beautiful evening you know the sun's going down the mountains behind me were lit up really nice big beautiful homes but uh yeah we're gonna chill out here we really should have gotten up this morning and tried to get entry permits for glacier they make this such a pain in the butt um, you know, if you want to come in between 6 a.m. and 3 p.m., you got to have a vehicle permit above and beyond your regular park pass that gets you into mo most parks. And uh, you got to be online like 759. You got to be online at 759 to enter your information and then hopefully get a pass because they only hand out so many a day and then you can't get in until after 3 p.m. or something like that. Um, and I'm not sure if we can, I'm not even sure which permits we need because I want to see the whole park. So it's like, do I need four different permits? Because they have four different permits. It's like, do I need a permit for the west side, the going to the Sun Highway, the mini glaciers? And, you know, it's like, 
and they have to be reserved 24 hours before you go in and I didn't realize that so I was thinking we'd reserve them tomorrow but you know I was going to try to go in tomorrow so now we basically have to burn a day uh, get up early tomorrow hopefully get the permit we think we need and then try to go in the day after um, or we can try to go in the route I was originally planning which is up and over these mountains here in the background there's a, a road Graves Creek Forest Service Road 114 and then Trail Creek Road that comes out over on the North Fork Road in the park north of the Pole Bridge Ranger Station and then if you get to the Pole Bridge uh, Ranger Station you got to stop and have a big bear claw which I'm guessing is like the pastry donut thing because everybody online who is giving me any feedback on this like be sure you get the bear claw like you know okay so uh yeah i think what we'll do is we'll try that tomorrow it's dirt as far as i know and if it gets bad we'll just turn around and come back out and run on down towards kalispell and um get a hotel again or find a place to camp and then just try to go in on the going to the sun highway if we can um or wait you know if, if we get on that other road we can hang out till three o'clock and then we can enter the park without a pass and then we can go to where i want to camp which is on the other side of the river um, you've got to cross where the ranger station is and then uh, there's a couple lakes up there that you can camp so i don't know we'll just kind of play it by ear tomorrow and see what happens so we'll update you then bye